How's it going everybody? Working on the Baja today, got the day off. Try, still trying to figure out what the deal is with this thing. No codes, no nothing. Did some more research, you know, maybe one of my sensors is starting to go bad but hasn't thrown a code yet. So one of the things that could be going bad is the crank position sensor and the cam position sensors. So today we're going to be checking at least the crank position sensor. So we're going to show you how to do that by checking its ohms on there. Should be like one to two or something like that. I'll let you know in the comments and description and I'll show you how to check it. So you're going to want to take off the alternator cover that goes right here and the uh, AC cover. Once you do that, the crankshaft position sensor is down here. So we show it. I have a socket on it right now. It's one 10 millimeter socket, and once you go ahead and unscrew that, you can take that bolt out and wiggle the sensor out and then unclip the sensor. So let's do that right now. All right, now we got the bolt out. Going to wiggle the sensor up. It should just pop out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull up, leave the connector on there. We'll take it once we pull it out a little forward. Don't forget to take off the negative battery terminal when you're working on cars. Don't want to short anything out. So this cam position sensor is in a very difficult spot to get to. It's right down there. I am unable to remove it out of the engine. I've tried prying it, pulling it, but you just cannot get enough leverage down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the alternator and then I should be able to access it right from the top and pull it out. The alternator is just held in by two bolts, basically. It's on this um, belt adjuster that sets the tension on the belt, and then the swing arm right here. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this guy. I'm going to first loosen the bolt down here that holds the tension in place. If you, do, if you try loosening this first, you may end up just stripping this bolt out. So remove that first, then that, and that, and then you should be able to just get out of the way. You want to loosen this as much as you can to where now you can just slide this belt over the alternator. Mine needs to go down a little further. It's so loose I can do it with my hands. Press down the alternator. Should be able to pull this belt a little more. Almost there. That alternator's all the way down. And there we go. Remove this bolt completely and the bolt that holds the tensioner in place completely to remove the alternator. All right, now we've gotten our alternator out of the way. You can very easily see the crankshaft position sensor. Very difficult to get out if it's stuck in there. So this should give me all the leverage and everything I need. We also have our coolant temperature sensor as well as the purge valve solenoid setup that is a big vacuum leak. So I went ahead and zip tied everything on there as well. Apparently missed that in my first zip tying adventure. Got it this time. <laughs> oh my god. It f***ing broke off in there. Oh my god. It broke. It broke inside the engine. Ah, this is not good. This is not good at all. What am I gonna do? Mm, uh, I could set the car on fire. That, eh, not a bad idea. It'd probably work. Push it off a cliff. Mm, no. That's not going to get that crank position sensor out of there. Mm. Uh, try to drill it out. Mm, yeah. yeah. Let's give that a shot. I really cannot believe this just happened. I, I, I don't know what to do. I mean... This is crazy. This is crazy. This is nuts. Look at it. It broke off. 
inside the engine. Uh, the only thing I can think of is drilling and tapping it and hope that it pulls out. I, I don't know what to do. This is crazy. I cannot believe this happened. Took some time to do some research. Uh, apparently this is pretty common. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try to scrape out all the housing around it. That little center thing in there is the magnet. Um, it's able to move. Looks like it's moving up and down and then getting caught on the crankshaft sprocket. So it doesn't look like it's gonna drop in the engine. Worst case scenario is I try to get all this out, it drops too far for me to reach, and then I have to take off the timing belt covers, and I should be able to access everything from the bottom. Might have to do that, and then if I'm doing that, might as well change out the radiator and the hoses, and you know, once you start touching one thing, might as well touch a whole bunch of things. So I'm going to start picking at this thing and try to get it out of there. We're starting to get somewhere. So, I, uh, I started drilling and tapping and got to this guy. This is just a little, like, dowel pin or something. I drilled and tapped that and then nothing was happening. So then I started eating away at the plastic around it and drilled and tapped into there and now I'm pulling out a whole bunch of copper wire. So yeah, we'll see what's in here after this. We've made some progress. Um, I've gotten every internal component to it out. All that's left is this metallic sleeve. And that is probably why the whole thing broke. And I can't seem to get it out. Hmm, what next? Ladies and gentlemen, we have done it. Introducing this thing. That was a lot of fun. Our hole is now open for business. So the way I got this out was I used this little, uh oh, stay on there. Okay. I used this little flat head and I shoved it around each corner just tapping in there and then what I did I bent it in and once I bent it in around there I was able to get some needle nose pliers and yank that sucker out of there this little thing it is pretty dirty and rusty and gummy so maybe that was causing my sensor to have some issues and now we got the new one from Subaru so we can install this back into our hole what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to sand the walls a little bit with 800 grit sandpaper to try to give it a little bit smoother of finishing. Get all that gunk out of there so it doesn't get stuck again. Hmm. Yup. Okay. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? Easy. Five minute job. I had a little bit of trouble getting the alternator out. So it looks like this surface right here has got a little bit of corrosion. There's a lip on it right here and on the other side. Same thing over here and over here. So I'm gonna file that down just a little bit with about 150 grit sandpaper. That should slide in there real easy. Okay, now we have the alternator in place. I've been able to put the belt back on. It's not tight yet, it's just moving around. You wanna make sure you're in the center. All the V grooves are in the correct positions. We got the crank pulley down there. We wanna make sure that's all set up good. And that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it by this bolt. This is what's going to raise and lower the alternator. It pivots it. And so that will pull tension on this. What I like to do is I'll check and see how much tension is on the other belt. And try to remember, it's about where you can turn it almost, you know, 90 degrees. Um, if, it gets, if it starts squeaking, then it probably needs to be tightened just a little more. It's very easy. So I'm going to tighten this bolt, that'll bring it up, tighten it, and then I'm going to lock it down with the bolt down there. Alright, and then that's pretty much it. Okay, now we've got our new crank position sensor on the left, 
and the remains of the one that I ripped out of the Baja. It uh, is not looking good. So, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and test them so we can show you how to tell if uh, you have a working crank position sensor. All right, we have our multimeter here. I'll put a link in the description to the one that I use. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna test the resistance or the ohms that this sensor is putting out. So ohms and resistance is this symbol. You wanna be on uh, that guy. So we're gonna use this to go ahead and see what our resistance values are, and then I'll tell you what they should be. It's gonna be difficult with the holding the camera. So let me uh, let me find out. Basically, you're gonna take both of these leads and very carefully touch them to each connector on there. It doesn't matter which one you're using, just make sure they don't touch each other. All right, I've got my connectors on the broken one and it's showing zero. So this one is bad. All right, now I've got both of them on the good one and it's reading 1.984, so this is a good sensor. You want this sensor to be right at where we recorded 1.9 kilo ohms. So right at about two kilo ohms is where this sensor should be working correctly.